Hey guys and welcome to a video I've seen has been requested constantly, pretty much every single video, and that is my leveling techniques and how I farm former. Now I have spoken about this before in a Q&A video, however it's obvious the answer to this question got lost in amongst the rest of the video. And I am going to say this right away, there are quicker ways to level weapons than the method I use, however since this actually takes into account not only leveling the weapons, but getting the former in the first place. Now there are ways of getting a lot of XP very quickly, going into defence groups with friends and just leeching XP, not really being any of use to them, or joining resource farming groups as a frame that doesn't do the killing like Necros, just passively levelling from there. The Draco rep farm used to be the most efficient spot to do that, especially if you played the Trinity or the buff frame like Mirage, neither of which got any kills, you could get your weapons to pretty much 30 in maybe 2-3 rounds with an affinity booster. Now the way I do it is all encompassing, and I am going to say that I run an affinity booster at all times. Most often I actually pick up the prime accessories, because when you work out plat costs for boosters, it actually works out quite a bit cheaper to get the 90 day XP and credit booster from the accessories. But at the end of the day it's useless trying to level your weapons up quickly if you've got no former to do it in the first place. So the method I use to farm former, I find that Tower 3 Sabotage is the best place to be able to farm it, especially if you go for all the void caches, depending on whether, well, depends on whether RNG is going to be a pain in the arse or not really. But the advantage of doing Tower 3 Sabotage is also that there is a pretty decent chance of picking up the Sindo Prime Blade, which can be sold for a reasonable amount of plat in the trade channel to rush former if you really need to. So the question is, where do I get all these Tower 3 Sabotage keys? Well that actually is where my levelling technique comes in. When I get an unranked weapon, or a freshly formed weapon, I go to Pluto Oceanium, which is a Spy 2.0 mission. I do 2 or 3 full stealth runs on Loki to get the initial levels of my weapon, which allows me to put sort of the initial mods on there, Serration, Split Chamber, maybe an Elemental Combo, that sort of thing. That means I don't have to leech on teammates when it comes to finishing off the levelling of the weapon. However, the Spy 2.0 node isn't just fantastic for the initial levels of the weapon, it also has a pretty decent chance to drop Tower 3 Sabotage Keys, which you can run for more former. In terms of finishing the weapon levelling, I tend to either do Tower 4 Defence to Wave 20 with clan mates, using Mirage to help boost the weapon damage and my clan mates with the Total Eclipse mod, helps it allow to sort of the weapon to stay relevant longer, or I go to the recruiting chat and I'll get myself into a tower 1 defence group where I can effectively kill up to about wave 20, even with the worst weapon you can think of. Once that's done, I just start the cycle all over again. So as you see, there might be more efficient ways of levelling the weapons, however my technique is more of a self-sustaining cycle that allows for you to play different mission types, different tile sets, with different people constantly rather than just the same node constantly because that is the quickest way to burn out in the game. Occasionally Spy 2.0 will not be cooperative and will just not drop those Tower 3 Sabotage keys. However, every now and again I just have a day where all I do is run that mission, that node, Oceanium on Pluto, and stock up on the Tower keys. I just stick on some music and I'll just run all day. Now this is the way that I personally level my weapons, as well as avoiding burnout in the game, since not only do I get asked how to level, where I get all the former, but how by doing so many former do I stop myself from getting burned out, and this is the way that I do it. The varied mission types, varied tile sets and different groups of people. It's enough to keep things fresh and fun even after a ton of former. Now when it comes to leveling frames, it's a bit more difficult. I have still well, a couple of ways that I often use to do this, neither of which are particularly quick. First way to do it is to unequip everything and go to somewhere like Ares Akkad Dark Sector Defense, Pluto Secure also works, and just stay up high out of the way on Akkad you can stand on the box or the uh, rafters in the ceiling, but have at least one decent weapon that can contribute to the team. As you know I really do not like leeching. The second way that I do it is pretty much almost the same as the first way, but I'll go into a tower 1 defense group, again with the weapon, uh, the single weapon fully ranked, and just do it that way. Same thing with the Grenier mobile defense on certain Kappa. However, usually I only do that for the, you know, the initial few levels, and then progress onto Eris Akkad or the tower 1 defense. 
But remember, at even rank 0, putting an aura in the slot can help you put on your base survivability mods and can stop you from spending the entire game dying all of the time. Now the best way to actually level your frames is with things like offensive powers. So frames like Hydroid with his Tentacle Swarm, Mesa with Peacemaker, and you've got Sarin. They're really easy to level fairly quickly because kills with the powers go directly to the frame. So frames like Nyx or Necross or something like that are way more difficult and a lot more time consuming to actually level. So I hope this has actually been helpful to you all and this can help you understand my method to leveling. If it helps you out with your leveling, that is absolutely fantastic to me. As always guys, many thanks for watching. Please remember to leave a like, subscribe, it helps me out a ton and I shall see you in the next episode.